All right, back with episode two of the uh, mini little tournament series here with Carolyn Smalls. Uh, a lot of exciting, a lot of exciting games, matchups, all of it. It finally started to pick up a little bit. I think after our first conversation, we we're kind of just waiting for something a little bit more interesting to go down. And it definitely did um, in the second round game. So uh, those finished up last night and now they're off until Friday. So I guess first off, why don't we touch on like the importance of getting some rest here? I guess every team, I'm assuming everyone will be off today. They'll probably do something light like tomorrow and then really start prepping. Um, I'm sure tomorrow into Thursday. Um, so interesting. Uh, the, the games will be back Friday, but uh, three, three days off. That's pretty good, but it's going to be a quick turnaround for these teams who are going to fly home and then have to fly probably somewhere else. Like I wonder how they're doing it. Yeah, it's definitely a quick turnaround. I'm sure it's a lot of physical rest, but not a lot of like mental yes. rest. Like I'm sure they're watching film. A lot of film and I'm sure they're kind of going through um, yeah. other teams that maybe play similar to their play style or playing their opponent. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm sure a lot of that is happening, um, but also kind of enjoying the fact that like you're in the Sweet 16. Right. Well, you get maybe like a day of that of like, okay. ep it's epic. Like people yeah. don't realize it's so hard to win in the NCAA. Like in general, it's hard to win, but to win in the NCAA tournament and get to the Sweet 16 is awesome. Like you said, is yeah, every every minute matters, every possession matters. And so that you're even still in the tournament, you're still competing, you're still practicing. Like that in and of itself is, a, is, is great. And mm -hmm. um, hopefully they're realizing that and just getting ready and geared up for the next, uh, next couple of rounds. Carolyn, we had two number one seeds go down. I know. And it was way too early for my Indiana Hoosiers. It was way too early. And Stanford, too, right? What were it was your way initial, too early for Stanford. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, yeah, it, this is the first time. This is the first time Stanford hasn't made a Sweet 16 since, like, what, 2007? Yeah. I think was, that's, um, yeah. That was the stat, yeah. Yeah. That's pretty, that's a pretty, I mean, that's a very long run. So like, what's one that congratulate that? Like that doesn't just happen out of luck. Um, mm -hmm. but man, what a fashion to go out in, and not in a good way on, on your home court too. I know. Is, I know. It has a very tough, a tough outing for sure. To and credit, really credit to, uh, to Ole Miss's defense, right? I know you're going to talk us through some of it, but, uh, yeah. I mean, it's such a low scoring game. Stanford known for just having a high powered offense. I think they just missed out on a lot of guard play. I feel like just throughout the season and especially down the stretch, um, you know, Ole Miss was able to really use their versatility, but, but that was, was yeah. nothing was like no shot Stanford got was easy. Like it was highly contested. They fronted in the post. They three quartered in the post. Mm -hmm. They played straight up behind in the post. They sent two or three. Like the, every possession, it was a different coverage, and they just couldn't. Stanford never got comfortable. And Cameron Brink, like we said in the first pod, she missed their first game. Right, she right. Was sick. They were saying, who knows? The, yeah, she hasn't played. They were saying she hasn't done much the past week because she's been sick. So you don't know, like coming off a stomach bug. You know how that is. That's, that's like you're probably. Yeah, and she was out there for. Long, long, long time. And she didn't, she missed some shots that she normally makes, right? Like, right. in you know, so how much is that is just your touches off because you just didn't play for a week? Or how much of that is almost defense? How much is it a combined yeah. Um, part? But yeah, yeah. First, yeah, first. And then any, uh, Indiana. Mm hmm. That Indiana. Well. That was, uh, for me watching that, I was like, this cannot be happening right <laughs> now. Um, again, on their home floor. Mm -hmm. Miami's the the nine seed, I believe. Eight, eight, eight or nine? No, they're nine. They're nine. Nine, the nine seed, um, which is just a, a major upset. Um, obviously, you know Miami won the ACC championship last year. They've got a lot of athleticism. It was an interesting matchup. Just again, Miami being so athletic from every position, and Indiana being a little bit more, you know, set positions, run through the post, um, a little bit less dynamic off the bounce. And I think that that was a tough matchup for them, just guarding. Um, defensively, and they're known just playing man to man, and uh, and Miami was really able to get downhill, get to the free throw line, and that one came down the stretch too. So we're gonna throw some video clips into this episode that we'll jump into now. So if you're listening to it, hopefully we'll do a good enough job explaining. Um, if you're driving or just listening to the podcast, um, but we are gonna upload the next couple episodes, including this one, onto YouTube. So we're gonna share screen, go through some film. We thought that would be a nice little uh, a nice little addition. Um, to just dive into some X's and O's and a little bit easier when you can see everything. So we'll start off where you want to start, Caroline. We want to go Stanford, or, uh, Stanford game or uh, Indiana. Let's go Stanford. Let's go. Right. 
Let me share this. Let's go Stanford. Coach Yo, shout out to Coach Yo. No, yeah. I mean, that de- it was all defense. Like, that was incredible. Um, just the ability to keep that up for the entire game as well. Like, that is that is no joke. Yeah, her uh, her reaction in the press conference, not even the press conference, it was a post-game interview, actually, before that. Um, she was super emotional, uh, just, you know, giving all credit to God and her team. And, you know, the people kind of counted them out. And, you know, they were the underdog, obviously. Um, but she, you could tell how much that win meant to her just oh, in that yeah. interview um, right after the game. So it's pretty cool when you, like, it kind of gives you the chills, you know, whether it's the men's side, FDU beating Purdue. Like, when you have those big upsets, like, it, it's it's a really cool feeling. And even just watching, if you're a basketball fan or you've played before, you know that those wins mean, like, everything. Yeah, they're massive. So let's let's kind of dive in. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Awesome. So yeah, so just this is kind of early, but just the defense that they're denying, right? So they're kind of denying that post pass, that post entry pass here, and they got to kind of swing that. They're Cameron Brink also. She's trying yeah. to get open. They're sending more backside help. Just fronting her, yeah. Look at that crowd too. And they force that, and they force that travel, and just the recovery to help off that. Yeah, can you can you go back travel. to that for a second? Yeah, let's see. Yeah, like so we got Cameron here. She's trying to get the ball in. They were swinging it back, so it's kind of like kind of top of the key. Mm-hmm. Ole Miss has to rotate, and, and they probably miss vertical. they probably miss a high low opportunity too right yeah. there. I don't know yep. who that is catching at the free throw line, but I feel like right there, right like, there, yep. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cameron, she's got some height. She's got a height advantage there. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're driving and she drives into three old miss players. And then Cameron Brink is boxed out right here, right? So he yeah. just sent bodies, bodies, bodies the entire game. Um, so we got Haley Jones kind of gets it like in the wing and pass right in there. But like again, just how look how mm-hmm. straight up this defense is again, sending oh. more help. Yeah. Right. Digging so, everywhere, digging it, everywhere. Digging everywhere. There's no way. She got, again, three old Miss defenders around her. Um, kind of pokes that ball free. And Haley Jones ends up taking a really tough contested two, which is just not, yeah. not a shot right now. Like, that's not the mm-hmm. shot that you want with, what, it looks like 18 seconds. How many seconds on the? Right, on the clock. Yeah, seconds, right? Like, you could, could maybe get a better shot than that. Um, so this will be our last one. But, look, they're, again, applying pressure kind of like even in the backcourt. It's nothing crazy, but it's still something that you have to deal with the whole game. Um, Stanford mm-hmm. known for getting a lot of back doors. We see they're setting it up right here. They do this yep. at least three times a game. Yeah. Right here. This, this weak side defense is already moving before she sees it early. Yeah. She see, she's anticipating that even if she's wrong and Haley Jones does reverse it, she's going to be able to get back even if mm-hmm. she is wrong. And she gets there in just enough time. And she gets all the way outside of the restricted arc. Like that just goes to their athleticism though, right? At yeah. every position. Yeah, their anticipation. They were just they just felt and looked a step ahead of Stanford this whole game. Mm-hmm. Right. There's just there's no at that point, like, like they got to they got to figure that part out. Like, but that's just great defense. And it was intense the whole the whole game. Can yeah. we take away? Go back to that for a second. Look at Coach Yo's reaction on the sideline when they get that stop. <laughs> he the, gives uh, a whole it's worth it's worth going back for. Her. I literally oh, yep, that there as, you were, as you were exiting it. Yeah, right here. Yeah, right here. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, that is that. uh from a player standpoint, there's nothing better than when your coach gets fired up for yeah, a good when your reason. coach is hyped like that. Come on yeah. now. In the biggest game of the year. That's awesome. Yeah. That's good stuff. On a big stage like that, a big stop. That's awesome. Uh-huh. Yeah, so it'll be it'll be exciting to see uh can Ole Miss carry carry the momentum moving forward. Especially against uh, Haley Van Lith, Louisville, you know, that's yeah. uh, that'll be an interesting matchup. That will be. Yeah. I'm yeah. interested to see in that one. All right, Indiana. Let's dive in. Indiana, Miami. This was was this Miami's second comeback game? Yeah. 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 They yeah. were down. I thought so. They were, yep. Um, Indiana was down 12 at halftime. So they were trailing this entire game. And uh, you know, they started right out of the third quarter. I think they made they had they might have gotten like a 6-0 run, you know, cut the lead to single digits pretty quickly and then ended up tying it. I was like, all right, everyone kind of exhaled a little bit. They're good, had to settle in. But Miami just kept answering back. And uh, yeah, Carolyn, you got the, the last 15 yeah, seconds so, or so here. Yes, yeah, so these are like the last like two clips. Um, so yeah. Miami's up with up three. Um after they were up one and Indiana missed the shot in the paint, they got the rebound and Miami fouled them. Yep. So then Indiana got their two shots or, uh, sorry, reverse that. Yep. Miami. Yeah. Yeah. We'll cut that, but you're good. 
Miami was, oh, hold on. Crap. Yeah, can you go full screen? Yeah. Are these the, and are these the ones uh, where Harding misses oh, yeah. the two free throws? Because she missed two at one point. So, no, so, so Miami made their two. Okay. After they got fouled off the rebound that Indiana missed. Yes. So now Indiana's got the ball. They're inbounding with 12.7 left. The fourth. Down three. And down three. And. Oh, so my God. The step back. Not Yarden Gar zone. Like she's a rookie. Like again, like nothing but net. Yep. Effortless. And so in my uh breakdown video that I did for the number one seeds, which now two of are irrelevant now <laughs> because they lost. But if you go back a little bit, I talked about how Indiana used Sydney Parish and Yarden Gar zone in ghost screen action. So mm. you're seeing here how as she goes towards the screen she yep. just slips out of it there's no contact made and that usually confuses defenders who are typically waiting to switch because there's no contact on the screen so there's almost like there's no screen so they're waiting to switch no screen happens two people end up with the ball that's a great little behind the back pass from Berger um and and Garzone with an open shot just slipping out of that screen man that's a big shot like that's a lot of control to knock that down so you got 6.6 yep. seconds left okay yep. So Miami calls timeout, they advance the ball. So now they're like table side, kind of in this box set with 6.6 .6 seconds left. And what do they do? They go right into the post. Yeah. And I mean. Size and athleticism. And just touch. Mm -hmm. Like that's just, and patience to get open. That's a hell of a pass too. Like you see yeah. Garzone on the ball, like that's to get that in there patience on that I mean the whole thing is just court awareness to know where your help's coming where the help defense is coming from and everyone I mean they're ready to box out in case mm -hmm. that doesn't go in but and Indiana has no timeouts that was the unfortunate part yeah, right they like, couldn't tough. advance the ball so and yeah so they have no timeouts the clock sucks at 3.3 and yeah. Indiana had to get the ball off the court they got the ball off the court but it got stolen yeah they didn't and even get a Miami, shot off I know yeah Miami gets to gets the win it's the win by two. Big time, big time. Love it. So two other games um, from that second round, Georgia, Iowa. Um, that was a did you watch that one too? Did you watch that one live? I did. I did. I watched most of the first half and then all of the second half. Yeah. So Georgia known for playing their zone. So I'm gonna pull up a couple of clips here um, that they've played all year under uh, Coach Abe. Um, who I don't know if you saw her uh, her press conference before the game. They asked her about you know about Iowa's roster, and she was super funny in the press conference. Like I don't know if she was playing dumb as if she was pretending like she didn't really know who they were, but she was like, "I wish I had a paper in front of me or something." Yeah. And then yeah. she re did you hear? The, I don't know if you heard this one, but then she referred to Nat uh, Natalie Marshall. Is that her? Gabby Marshall? Gabby Marshall, I think is her name, the shooter, twenty four. Um, and when she was like the, the cute little one with the eyes, like it was so funny. Um, her personality was good, but uh, Gabby Marshall, I must've heard that she, she lit her up. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, she had a ton of threes on the day, but Georgia's zone early. Are you able to see my screen? Yeah, go, yeah, go full screen. I'll go full screen. Here we go. So Georgia again, playing a super aggressive matchup zone just to start the game, just how active they are. And I'll even put these in slow-mo a little bit and rewind, but all over the place, picking up Caitlin Clark early. I was going to say. Seeing defenders, yep. Stunting. Before she even has the ball, too. Like, in transition, before she yep. even gets the ball, there, there's someone with her. Like, you know, they're good point. They really, really good don't point. want her getting the ball. Like, they're right. trying to get in front of her matching up early as soon as she crosses half court but they're there they're getting they're getting to a fast yeah because we know uh we're gonna see a clip later of logo clark so we know mm -hmm. if you don't pick up the ball early she's gonna shoot this so it was a great job awareness stopping the ball and then getting set in their zone so again just seeing how active they are hands are flying and look at this cutting off the passing angle here for the one more so that there's no extra pass and they had Iowa um, on their heels I'd say for the majority of the first half um early yeah. on you're seeing I was used to playing a lot of against a lot of man to man and uh their their passes just weren't clean. They looked a little mm -hmm. bit rushed, like you're seeing here, yep, having a dribble. There. Yep. So turned them over early. Second clip. Here they are in the matchup zone again. Really bumping well. Balls in the high post and active hands. Active, like yeah. this is Clark. This is a layup if she makes a bounce pass here. If those hands are mm -hmm. down, 
active hands in the center of that zone. Or even, or even pass fake down and go up. Like, but mm-hmm. she kind of got caught in that halfway. Didn't really, didn't really fake and predicting that pass. Yep. So again, just a couple plays um, for from Georgia's zone that really kept him in it. And it was, it's, it's crazy though because they just had a, such a hard time scoring that. They got so many stops in the first half, but we're still down at halftime. Um, they really had a hard time scoring the ball, but their defense hung in there, though. Their defense did hang in there. So now they, Iowa starts to figure it out a little bit. Still first half, Kalen Clark exploits the zone by the quick skip pass. So you're mm-hmm. seeing here, before they can really get matched, everyone's loaded to Clark. This is where she's special, making these one-handed skips. And her teammates came to play. They shot the crap out of the ball in the day, um, especially in the first half when Clark struggled. And by, and by skips, like quite literally across the entire court. I mean, <laughs> yeah. It wasn't, you know, it was across the entire court. Um, here's the logo, I, Clark. Yeah, here we got a logo. How many of these have we seen this season? Oh, my. It's ridiculous, right? Just the rhythm. Like, she knows. When do you think she knows she's shooting this, Carolyn? Uh, here. <laughs> right here, yeah. right? She's like, look, I'm look, no one's no one's stepping up. Go yeah. back, go back. No yeah. one's stepping up on her. Yeah. Everyone's retreating back. So she's like, oh, I got this. This is my shot. And her footwork is just so smooth. Like she gets into the left, right. Just everything is seamless. And it's not a heave. Like that's her shot form. Right. Like, to that's be clear, point. like she's not just like heaving it up there, hoping a prayer. Like that is her shot form. Yeah. Um, so that's like, that was what, what she had three. I think she had eight points. Yeah. The entire first half. Mm-hmm. That was three of them right there. So. Yeah, they Georgia did a. I mean, they did a great job on her. They made other guys take shots, but the problem was those other guys made shots. Um, and so they, and they, the real problem was they turned the ball over three times in a row under a minute and a half. Yeah. Crucial, yeah. crucial down the stretch. Point. I know they. Yeah, they didn't give themselves a chance. You know, they they kind of shot themselves in the foot there. I mean, they were they were. You didn't see the usual confident Caitlin Clark. Like she, you know, she was in shooting, first well, but, she, mm-hmm. but you didn't see everything else like you know she wasn't yeah. just walking the walk like she was maybe a little rattled maybe a little frustrated yeah. hey um, but then the fourth quarter came around and that's when Caitlin Clark uh second half she showed up fourth yeah, quarter yeah she dominated. yeah she's hyping the crowd up she's like oh okay you know oh yeah time how many here. times do you think she waved up into the crowd as you're watching I, I at think least I in like 17 yeah, yeah at least 10 <laughs> Like I, the atmosphere is unbelievable though. Uh, Lisa Bluter talked about how they've sold out. I think every, every home game this year. Um, so the Clark effect, man, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Here she is. Let's just say appreciation for some of these dimes to Sanano mm-hmm. down low again, yeah. had a hard time finding her in the first half, but they connected in the second half. Another one ball in the middle of the zone. No look like she's, she's looking at the corner right now. Yeah. She's looking corner with her with her right and yeah. seeds that thing inside. That's just chemistry. That's just playing with someone for, for years and, and you just know that what they're doing. Look at this stat. Yeah. Ellen Clark responsible for each of Iowa's last 21 points. So she's either scored on or assisted on. Assisted, and yeah. they kept bringing up that uh that stat throughout the game. Yeah, I think it was the last I think I saw was 25. She was responsible yeah. for the last 25 of 26, I think maybe. Yeah, I think you're right. That's pretty crazy. So here is uh Kaylin Clark time again. I think she figured out the zone, keeping it off the sidelines and actually trying to drive the zone a little bit. A lot of, you know, typically you hear like, you don't want to dribble against the zone ball movement, but every time she got into the seams, um, mm-hmm. she made something happen. So you're seeing here defense forced to step up a little dump pass. This is an easy. She makes this play in her sleep. Um, and that's just yeah. an easy two points, right? Cause you're putting the pressure on the defense. The defense has to commit to either help mm-hmm. off of help totally off their player like they do here or to stay and Caitlin's already beating her girl. Yeah. And if you're any coach in the country, you're telling if Caitlin Clark has the ball, you're stepping up, you're going to, you'll make, let somebody else try and score. (laughs) Yeah. You got to, you can't give Caitlin Clark an open layup. I'm sorry. This is not good basketball. Fourth quarter, Iowa up to, Mm -hmm. to seal the deal. Of course, Georgia had a couple more opportunities down the stretch, but to put them up for it's Caitlin Clark time in and out dribble two foot. A little floater in the lane uses the glass so well. Bucket. Yeah. And it was it was a quiet performance from her, except the fourth quarter. Like overall, yeah. it, it you didn't seem like, oh wow, she's got that many. She got that many assists, right. she got that many points. Like I think know, it was only like 22 points or something. Yeah. It was only it, 22. It, it, it wasn't loud. It wasn't a, it wasn't a usual because she her points are usually loud. Right. It didn't feel loud at all. Not at least not from watching on TV. 
A hundred percent. Yeah. I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited to continue to continue to continue to watch them down the stretch. So we will see, but uh, next one, Ohio state UNC. This is a game that I feel like maybe wasn't talked about as much just because there wasn't, it wasn't number one seeds playing, but Ohio state's been fun to watch. I don't know if you've watched them at all this year, Carolyn, but their, their pressure, the full court press, they turn teams over. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's their style of play up and down, really guard heavy, want to get to the basket. So here's just a couple clips early. Ohio state got into a, out to a big lead. UNC had to call a timeout. They regrouped, fought back, ended up tying it up late, but right to, to set the tone, um, Ohio state was coming out pressing and you're just seeing turnovers just right from the, right from the get go. Yeah. Just miscommunication. It looks like maybe. Yeah. Kind of go long diagonal with it again. Ohio you state mixes it up. Air. Yeah. They'll go one, two, 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 one. Sometimes they'll trap right away. Sometimes they'll wait till it passes back to the inbounder. So they've got, they've got a couple different coverages and depending on how aggressive that they're being, but just sails it out of bounds going long diagonal. And you're going to see the same thing again, a couple possessions later. And Hey, that, that's all you need is to create that hesitancy and to create that uncertainty. You do that enough times in a game and that that's a big deciding factor. Yep. So now they have to inbound to their post player. This is their, one of their posts in the corner, which yep. is not yep. ideal. Yeah. You never want to involve the ball inbound the balls to the corner and especially not to your posts. So now it causes a little bit of panic. And again, a play that's there, like this pass is there. This should be completed. But Ohio State, again, I think they just had UNC on their heels a little bit to start the game. And just yeah. passes they normally create um, and connect on just sail out of bounds. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, it was really uh, the commentators talked about, you know, whenever UNC got stops, they were good because they didn't have to handle the pressure. Yeah. So when Ohio State scored, it was always a little bit tougher for UNC because they had to go up against that press. When they got stops, that's when they were able to cut the lead and really, uh, really kind of make a run at Ohio State because they did not have to waste time to set up the press break. Here again, you're seeing the rotation. Yeah. And it's just that pressure. It's that someone's on your back. Like maybe that's not where you're used to getting the ball, yeah. right? Like maybe that pass that you would make is not open, is not open right now. Um, Ryan, and look at the ball pressure. Look at the ball pressure. Question. Yeah. Yeah. They're right. Yeah. Ohio's right there. Pinching the middle. And again, this is speed. Ohio state, very versatile. You, just someone coming from, you can't see that. Like you, you, you know, you can't, I don't think you see that person coming behind you. Until it's, it's too late. Passing lane. Until it's too late. And you got, yeah. I mean, you got to come to that, right? You got to come to that, to that pass, but. Looks and this like is it. them being successful oh. with it. Deja Kelly, their, their best ball handler, I would say overall, um, kind of takes things into her own hands on this possession, keeps it off the sideline as much as she can to avoid that trap. So if she dribbles towards the sideline, I think here anymore, they're mm-hmm. probably going to come trap her. Yeah. I'm assuming just based on watching them in the middle of the floor, they will not run at you. It's just when you pick the ball up on the sidelines. So she keeps it on the rail, drives to the basket and gets fouled. So instead of slowing down and, and setting something up, yeah, just a way ahead. to really combat it is actually to push pace and try to get some easy transition layups. Yeah. And, it could, and even if you have numbers, even if you don't have numbers, if you have an open lane, like get, get attack it. Yep. Just get to the free throw line, slow the game down a little bit. Yep. Stop the clock, put points up, get confident in your shot. So last, the last thing I want to touch on Ohio state, they've got UConn coming up in the sweet 16. So that's going to be a big time matchup. And it'll be, it's going to be interesting because Ohio state played the majority of their game with a post player that was six foot one. That is their five man. They open the lane. They want to play five out. They'll play off the elbows, but their guards do all their work. Um, And a lot of these teams, especially the number one seeds we've seen, have dominant post players. So they're different. This That's why this game was such an interesting one because it was almost like small ball on both sides. You're seeing here, Again, the lane is completely open. They're not playing through a post player. J.C. Sheldon, their clutch guard. I mean, look at that defense from UNC. Yeah, they were. They talked about all game long um, how UNC, their goal is really to be loaded up on that weak side and stop drives. So all the handoff action and all of it with the idea of getting downhill. Again, open paint. Yeah, it looks like a double gap. They're just attacking. 
Nice little, yep, nice little Euro step. But they run a lot of false action, again, with the goal of getting J.C. Sheldon and their other guards like Cody McMahon, who we'll mention a little bit later downhill. High percentage shots. Put some pressure on other teams. Mm -hmm. Maybe you get fouled. Someone gets in foul trouble early. Look at the spacing right now. Look at that yeah. spacing. Not a great, not, not a well back. You're not on balance on that closeout. Exactly. Drive the closeout. Yep. It's a tough recovery when you're not, when you're out of position like that. And helping when the ball's in the, on the rails or in the slots like this, that help is a lot longer of a, mm -hmm. of a commitment. So she's already leaning. This is Alyssa Utsby out here. She's kind of leaning back out towards the shooter in the corner and she's late. So that lane line drive Ohio state loves. So speaking of, maybe we should go qu quickly through just what these Sweet 16 matchups will be. Yeah. Um, so really quick, just in the Greenville 1 and 2, South Carolina, U UCLA. We got Notre Dame and Maryland. I'm very excited. That'll be interesting. I'm excited for that game. Yeah. Um, Miami and Villanova. Mm-hmm. And LSU and Utah. So that's Greenville 1 and 2. Then we got on the lower end of the bracket, Seattle four and three. We got yeah. Ole Miss and Louisville. That that de Ole Miss defense is what I'm looking forward to against. See that in uh, in that matchup. Yeah, and uh, and Van Lith. We'll see. Yeah, she was. Yeah, she's getting kind of spicy with Texas. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll get to we'll that. See what happens. And uh, Colorado, you know, and uh, Iowa. Yep. Virginia Tech, Tennessee, and then Ohio that one I'm curious about. Very. I also didn't realize this is that Tennessee has made every national tournament ever. I did not know that. Wow. I'm pretty That's, sure I saw that stat. Um, I believe I, it. I believe it. They're um, putting up numbers too. Like they pounded Toledo and Toledo's yeah. a great team, um, was, but yeah. I couldn't believe how much, they, how many points they put up. Cause I feel like they've had trouble scoring. Um, yep. 94 to uh, 47. Yeah. Sheesh. Then the last one is Ohio state and UConn. Mm. So some really exciting uh, matchups coming in the in the Sweet 16 here. A hundred percent. Yeah. Which one? Wh which one would you? Uh, are you most excited about? Would you say? Um, I think maybe. Oh, I don't know. It's got to be between uh, Utah and LSU, and yeah. Ole Miss and, and Louisville. Just yeah. At LSU, because I'm not sure, and everyone said it, I'm not sure how much they've been tested this season in terms of just like teams that they've played and they faced and have played really well. Like, you know, the, the big game that was amped up this season was their game against South Carolina. It yep. turned out to kind of... It was a little be, bit of a bust, yeah. Yeah, not to be their best showing. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited to see, you know, how they, how they look. Um, and then... Uh, Ole Miss and Louisville just because of Ole Miss's defense. I mean, I'm really excited to see how that uh, translates and what that looks like, what their guards can do to Louisville and who gets frustrated, you know, because all yeah. that kind of stuff is, is going to be a factor into it. And who can. And they're physical, man. It, and it's what, are your, what are your thoughts? Uh, I, I think coming off of a big win, it's like teams usually go one way or the other. They're usually so high, like high on that win, momentum carries into the next game, or they come out and they're kind of they're kind of flat. And and it's you know, do you think it'll be a close game? You think it'll be down to the wire, or do you think that they expended all their energy and you know the rebound effect might kind of get them a little bit? Hmm. I think it's gonna be a close game. Okay. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's gonna be a close game. I think. I think, you know what I'm going to say? I think Ole Miss wins. All right. I, I like I'll, that bet. I like I'll that bet. That, I'll put that out there. I think it's going to be a close game, but I think that they, I do think that they win. I, I think it's going to be close the entire time. I don't think we're going to see, you know, a 10 or 12 point lead. I think it's going to be close. Pretty yeah. Much the game. Yeah. I've got a Ohio State UConn circled, which mm -hmm. to me, I feel like it's going to go one of two ways. Um, I think the first five minutes is really going to set the tone of that game. If Ohio State comes out and turns UConn over a couple times in that first quarter, they'll be good. I think that they'll give them a game. If UConn comes out and scores against the press the first two possessions, I think UConn's going to run away with it. Yeah. So I really am curious to see how the first five minutes of that game goes because I think it will set the tone for is Ohio State going to be fueled up, ready to play off of those turnovers, and that kind of kind of keeps them in the game. Because, again, UConn's got some post players down there between Edwards, Dorka. Okay. 
I'm curious to see how the size will match up. Um, whereas I think Ohio State has an advantage on the perimeter um, in terms of just quicker and more athletic guards. Um, but again, UConn, uh, UConn's humming right now. So I hate to bet against them. And uncharacteristically, at least from when I've seen them this year in terms of UConn, they were pressing this in these past games. Like they, they threw out a press, which I haven't seen them do if at all or much before. And so you got to think, is that in anticipation for Ohio state? Are they right. getting ready to, to press a press, you know, are they getting ready to, to press a pressing team? Like, um, so that, that part intrigued me. I was like, Oh, okay. UConn's yeah. doing something that they're, they're practicing. They're doing something a little different than what they normally do. Um, and maybe, you know, see. And AZ Fudd was knocking down some shots mm-hmm. the other day. So yes. that's a Quite great a sign for them. I mean, she's automatic. Quite a few shots. And shout out to uh, Lou Lopez Seneschal, who was a uh, player of the year in our conference last year. And it's awesome seeing her like right. on the biggest stage going from Fairfield, where she was obviously a great player. But again, now playing on the biggest stage in the NCAA tournament and has a real shot at a national title coming from our from the MAC is, uh, is, is really cool that she's representing. That's so. awesome. Love that. But that's going to lead right into my player to watch. And that's going to be Cody McMahon from Ohio state. She's mm. a freshman with a senior's body. I mean, when I first saw, I was like, there is no way that this girl is a freshman. Um, she's a freight train in transition. You don't want to step in the way. Um, Cause that's going to hurt if you're trying to take a charge against her. But again, super dynamic, um, not a great shooter yet. Teams are typically, you know, step off of her just because she's so quick off of the bounce, but mm-hmm. her ability to finish with both hands, elevate over for a pull-up jump shot. Um, she's going to be a really special player. And I think she's a, uh, she's one to watch both from the offensive end and the defensive end. And that's Cody McMahon, Ohio state. That's a good one. I got, I got diamond Miller at uh Maryland. Yep. Um, so long. She's so long. Well, she's long. It is weird. Her length just leads to her on defense of just getting in passing lanes in that pressure, especially on smaller guards who maybe can't get that pass around her. Um, but she definitely put, she definitely has the ability to kind of poke that ball free. Mm-hmm. Um, she passes well. She wants to push the ball, but she'll also weak out and be, and be on the break first. Um, yep. so really, it's really great to kind of just like see, okay, which one is she going to do? Um, but she also sets up the pass really well in terms of she might – lead that transition and then wait a second or two and then pass that open teammate cutting to uh cutting to the rim so really excited for that um she looked really good in their last game and she's a WNBA you know draft prospect pretty high up there from mock drafts that I've seen and so I always think it's great to see um a player like that how they've responded how they um are on the biggest stage of their you know this is her last year so Maryland's gonna be a tough out they're gonna be a tough out they're versatile yeah so, um, so Diamond Miller is, is mine to watch, my player to watch. Love it. Love it. All right. Last thing to wrap it up. I just thought of, so I was watching a bunch of press conferences um, from teams that lost. Mm. Um, so whether it was Oklahoma's uh, Jenny Bronzik, um, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing her last name, but um, the Indiana coach, obviously Terry Morin, and just seeing their reactions, you know, after losing, like Mackenzie Holmes on national television was distraught. Um and just the time and the investment that like these players and coaches put into it. Like, I don't think people get it. You don't get it until you're there. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, you know, playing in these big games and in Indiana, having those championship aspirations, um, the Oklahoma coach, this was her, this is her second season there, I believe. And just them talking about like how much they care about their players in these press conferences mm-hmm. after the game. Cause the questions are usually, you know, directed to the seniors of the group, you know, what was it like coaching so-and-so, you know, um, between their seniors, so how, how much they care about their players. Like, I just wanted to kind of mention that and, and touch on how good these coaches have been about talking about how much their players have put into the program, but then life mm-hmm. after basketball. Like Jenny Bronzik talked about every single one of the seniors um, that were on her squad and how they came back when they could have transferred when she, took the, when she got the job um, and they could have left for their COVID year and they stayed and they were loyal and they worked every single day and how proud that she was of them. Um, and then again, the care, like just seeing Mackenzie Holmes talk about how it was, it was her last game with Grace Berger. Um, so just the investment and, and the time, uh, it's just, it's more than basketball, but mm. the game means so much and the competitive nature, just, just all of it. And, and it's just a little, it's different not to compare the women's side to the men's side, but yeah. the men's side, you, you can go to college for a year and you're done. Right. You could leave in April. 
and then be done, right? Like you, you did, you've done your time. You played maybe a game or two in the tournament. And if you're that guy, you're going to get drafted. It's not a year for these women, right? It's three, it's a minimum of three years. And at that point, it's like, okay, am I going to leave now and not get my degree? I might as, for most of them, it's like, I might as well stay. Right. Stay a fourth year, get a degree. You have to realize also some of these players, most of them, these seniors, COVID. So they didn't play it for a tournament, right? So they didn't get one. Um, so just how much time and energy and uncertainty really in the beginning of COVID has gone into, are we going to be, is there going to be a tournament, you know, now that you're here um, and to kind of get knocked out, even at, at any point is, you know, your season is over. You're not seeing those people in that capacity anymore in that way, right? Like it's, it's, yeah. as, it's as great as of a season it can be. It's also, it, every season has an ending, right? Yeah. It's inevitable. It's going to end. Um, but it's really nice and refreshing to hear these coaches talk about their players in this way. And you realize that how much deeper it is than I want you to put this ball in this hoop, right? Like they right. care about them as people and as, as adults and people going out into the world. And so um, I think it just goes to show that you're p- not picking a team, you're picking a university and you're picking a program that is going to help you become and maximize your abilities and your strengths on and off the court. And you're going to have these people, you rather your teammates or your coaches, hopefully in your life in some capacity to the, for the rest of your life. And so I think those coaches kind of go to show like what a really great relationship with your coach can kind of do and what that can look like for them as well. Yeah. You make such a good point comparing it to the men's side of they're usually one and done. Like I think you can make a great relationship, have a great relationship with a player in one year. There's no doubt about it, but there's something to be said for two years, three years and four years. Right. And some five for some of them. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. how close knit a group of players get, but mm-hmm. a coach and a player from yeah. all the ups and downs that college basketball brings. It's never, it's never perfect. It's never all, all the highs. There's plenty of lows um, for every athlete and just the relationships again, that are built and the loyalty and the trust. Um, and knowing that like these players are going out and playing their hearts out for these coaches mm-hmm. too. Um, and the amount of time that goes into scouting and recruiting and, and again, like trying to rebuild a roster, like whatever it might be, but like you said, developing those three year, four year, five year players. Um, and that bond is, is special. And then going, going further is like, there's like for a lot of them, like you said, they're done like basketballs. Some of them might play overseas, a good handful, um, especially from, you know, the top teams, but for the WNBA, it's, it's 12 teams with 12 roster spots. Like you see half of the, most of the draft picks don't end up making a team. So college basketball for a majority of players is the peak. Like that's where it is. Like that's where you get treated the best. You get the most um, viewership in terms of TV and people actually paying attention and the fans are invested. Um, Not every overseas team has that. Um, So, you know, those those college years are big time. And if they do, you're overseas and your family's here for the most part, right? So it's also like you could be playing in, I don't know, Spain. How is your family going to be watching that game, right? Like how is, so it's it's just different. It's just a very different um, situation for sure. Yeah, no, it's, it, it's been, it's great to watch. And it's so, it's cause on the, the flip side of it is the teams that don't expect to win that do like, mm-hmm. that is like an amazing feeling. Um, mm-hmm. you know, Miami in their locker room, like, you know, upsetting the number, the number one, uh, a number one scene in Indiana, mm-hmm. like they, they, might have, they must've had doubts coming in and doubts throughout the season. Like every team does, but, uh, getting that big win, like that goes the same way. Like we believed in it. You know, we stuck through the process. You have rough patches through the year and now you have the biggest win of that might be the biggest win in school history. So yeah. Um, yeah. Same for Ole Miss. You, yeah. It's, it's a major, exactly. major, major win. Exactly. On a, on a great. It's, it's what you love about March Madness though. Love it. Love it. So just wanted to throw that in there at the end, but uh, excited um, for Friday when the games start mm-hmm. back up and we will uh, definitely get uh, an episode up either probably Sunday, maybe I guess it's Friday, yeah. Saturday, those games and we'll uh, we will reconvene them, but I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the little video breakdown that we added to it. I think that was a, I like that Caroline. I think it yeah, was a good, good addition. So sounds good. We hope you guys enjoyed episode two of the, uh, the mini series here.